right, boys and girls, we are going to play a game today. We will be doing some fourth grade review. It'll cover everything that we have learned this year so far. I will just click on random boxes. You can add up your points, and in the comments, I want you to tell me how many points you got. So let's start here. Um, each category just says star reading, either one, two, three, four, or five. So it doesn't really matter which category we click. Let's start here. Wind whistle in your ears and blows the leaves all around you. The smell of fall is in the air. This is an example of a poet using what? Giving the answer in three, two, one. What is sensory language? We've learned about sensory language. This is when the poet is using or the author is using its um, using your five senses or appealing to your five senses by saying what something tastes like, feels like, smells like, sounds like, or looks like. If you need more time before I say that I'm going to give the answer, you can just pause the video. Um, so let's go back to our boxes. Let's go here. The author's purpose for writing an advertisement for a water park is, given the answer in three, two, one, to persuade. They want you to, they're trying to persuade you to go to that water park. Next, let's get a little harder. Let's go here. When a question asks about a certain paragraph or other part of the text, it is important to go back and blank that part of the text before answering the question. Sometimes you need to blank that part several times. Several times. The answer in three, two, one. Reread. You want to reread it. Read it again. Several times. To look for your text evidence. Let's see, let's go with 500 over here. To help you understand a text better, you can use the text evidence and your background knowledge to infer a character's blank. Ooh, this one's kind of tough. Giving the answer in three, two, one. The character's traits or feelings. Let's go 100. Before reading a paired passage, read the blank first so you have an idea of what to look for in the text. Hmm. Answer in three, two, one. Read the questions. Think about your unreal strategies. Read the questions. All right, let's go for 200. Which point, which point of view? So they want you to tell what is the point of view of this passage or this paragraph. When they had finished eating, they all went to the backyard to watch the fireworks. Jessie smiled and her brother smiled back at her. What is the point of view? Answer in three, two, one. Just kidding. Try that again. Third person point of view, because this person is, well, we have the pronouns they and her. Let's just know it's third person. Again, if I'm going too fast with revealing the answers, you could just pause the video. That way you have more time to think of an answer. Always pick an answer choice that you can go back and prove with blank, blank. Answer in three, two, one. Text evidence. Always go back and look for your text evidence. I tell you guys this so many times. Let's go with 200. 
When answering questions, it is important to highlight or underline your blank blank to prove your answers. I think it's starting to get through here that this answer is very important. Answer in three, two, one. Again, text evidence. It's ironic that I, or coincidental, that I clicked both of those back to back. That was not on purpose. Uh, let's go 400. What is the author's purpose? We thought the game was over, the buzzer rang, and we thought that we had lost, but the referee blew the whistle. A foul was called, and now Derek had a chance to win the game for us. He stepped up to the free throw line. The stadium, though filled with people, was completely silent. Everyone was still. Derek dribbled the ball a couple of times. A couple times, he squared up on the line. Sweat beaded on his forehead. All eyes were on Derek. What is the author's purpose for writing this very sensory language-filled paragraph? The answer in three. Two, one. To entertain. The author wrote this just to entertain you. Let's try 300. What is the author's purpose? A handbook teaching people how to build a birdhouse. The answer in three, two, one. What is to inform or informational text? All right, let's go 400 again. Identify the figurative language, tell what two things are being compared, and explain what it means. The detective listened to her story with a wooden face. The answer in three, two, one. What is a metaphor? So when you play Jeopardy, they always, usually they put the question, the answer in a question form. And so what is a metaphor? That is this figurative language right here. The detective's face was wood. The detective had no expression as they listened to her. Let's go with this one. Identify the type of figurative language used here. She was as bright as the sun. The answer in three, two, one. That's a simile. Comparing two things used in like or ask. Let's go with 300. What point of view? POV point of view. Trey looked out the window. The rain was still pouring down. He threw his baseball glove on the couch with a sigh. The thunder cracked and his phone dinged. Trey picked up the phone. It was a message from his cousin. The game was canceled because of the weather. Trey didn't, didn't reply to the message. He threw the phone back on his bed and, rub, and, rubbed on, ugh, sorry, and rubbed his temples. The rain pattered on the roof. So what is the point of view here? First person? third person? Hmm. The answer in three, two, one. This is third person point of view. We have the pronouns his and he lets us know it is third person. Let's try this one. Text structure. Many birds depend on horseshoe crab for survival. Horseshoes lay their eggs on the beach and bury them in the sand. If the water is rough, many of the eggs get pushed to the open. The birds eat these eggs. What is this text's structure? The answer in three, two, one. Cause and effect. So remember text structure we talked about. There's cause and effect, descriptive text, compare and contrast, and 
is the other one that we talked about. Sequencing. There we go. <laughs> All right. Let's go with one of our 500s. Identify the point of view of the following paragraph. Red looked across the prairie. He didn't see anything concerning. He wondered why Texas Joe had hollered like that. Texas Joe turned to him. The ghost that Texas Joe had just seen was gone. Texas Joe swatted at the air. Now he felt crazy. You have to believe me, Red. It was just here, said Texas Joe. Red scowled at him in disbelief. What was just here, Joe? he asked. Red was angry with, with Texas Joe for disturbing his sleep for no apparent reason. So what is the point of view here? The answer in three, two, one. Third person point of view again because that pronoun he and him Let's just know it is third person. Let's try another 500. Sentence stems. The reader can tell blank. The reader can infer, infer blank. The reader can conclude blank. These sentence stems require a reader to make an what? What is it called when we use our text clues and our background knowledge? Answer in three, two, one. And in France, they want you to make an educated guess. Let's go with 300. When you use prior knowledge and evidence from the text, this is called a, or an, Answer in three, two, one. And inference using your background knowledge, which is also called schema, and your text clues or text evidence. Let's go with 200. When reading a question, pick out the blank blank and highlight or circle them so you can understand what the question is asking you. The answer in three, two, one. Keywords. Let's go down to 500. Setting. Where and when is the story taking place? The swings and slides were abandoned. So abandoned that she could hear her heart, her head pound. Like little hands clamoring to escape prison. On a nearby bench, she saw an afternoon paper. The cross, the crossword halfway complete, and she had sat next to it, grateful for its lifeless company. The wind blew and sent the leaves swirling and brushing up against her bony, exposed ankles. She tightened the scarf around her neck and pulled it up so, pulled it up so that her mouth was covered. Looked at her watch and waited, waited, waited. When she finally saw him through the harsh darkness. She was too tired to get up. Where and when is the story taking place? The answer in three, two, one. Nope, let's try that. There we go. It is at the park in winter at night. Here we have swings and slide to let us know if it's at the park. Um, it talks about how cold she was wearing a scarf that lets us know it's winter. And we have here, it was harsh darkness. That lets us know it is night. Let's go with 100. First person and third person point of view. Third, so they're asking you which one it is. I hopped on my bike and rode to the store to buy my mom a quart of milk. First person point of view or third person point of view? The pronouns I and my let us know that this is first person point of view. Let's go 400. I'm running out of time on this video, so we will finish on the next slide in the next video.